The truth is I've always wanted to do roles that were interesting. They were just not often uh, available to me. But now with the, this film, they're suddenly available. So I'm maybe the first choice on a list as opposed to the fourth or fifth. And uh, I'm going to take advantage of that, you know. John Travolta sprak hier een paar dagen voordat Pulp Fiction in roulatie ging. Met die film maakte hij een van de grootste comebacks uit de geschiedenis van Hollywood. Zijn eigen geschiedenis valt uiteen in drie delen. Eerst was er Saturday Night Fever. Well, it was uh, a revelation that I could have that, you know. And uh, certainly I had representation that was kind of breeding me for <coughs> film acting, you know. But, uh, and that was a seal of approval, the first round. Zijn tweede fase. Second career was, um, I would say, uh, kind of surviving. Meaning like, you know, pictures like Luke was talking, and staying alive, and those, those pictures that were kept me... Um, going. En zijn derde en meest succesvolle fase begon met Pulp Fiction en de ontmoeting met regisseur Quentin Tarantino. I was curious about why he was interested in me or why he was a fan. And uh, he went into a retro kind of thing. And then uh, uh, I, we talked about film and uh, what his, his movie got Reservoir Dogs and. Uh, so on and so forth. Then we made a plan to get together again, and I spent the whole day with him. He came down to my house to play the, the Welcome Back Carter board game. And, but it was funny, though, because, like, he goes, well, now when we play it, do you want me to, like, be, you know, John, or do you want me to be Barbarino, you know? And I was like, oh, um, no, I want you to be John. I want you to be John. But if any moment you want to, like, you know, slip into a Barbarino-ism, you know, uh, from time to time, that would be cool. It's okay, no problem. He goes, well, do you want to win? I go, no, 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 I want you to play the win. Play the win. Try to beat me. You know, what you did, by the way. En hij kreeg de rol die een wending gaf aan zijn loopbaan. De rol van Vincent Vega, eerst aangeboden aan Michael Madsen. Werd nu voor 300.000 gulden aan John Travolta aangeboden. Hij nam het aanbod aan, maar hij had zijn bedenkingen. Well, the, the thing was, is that as an actor, it totally excited me to play him. But, you know, I am somewhat morally responsible for what I do on screen. So I thought, well, guy, can I play heroin addict? Can I play murderer? You know, well, how do I do it? But then I ascertain quickly that the script itself had a different um, a different uh, message than let's say Goodfellas or Sons of Lamb or any of those things. It was it had a lot of humor, it was fiction, you know, and it was different. And I finally had to settle on the concept that it was different. Hij kreeg er een Oscar nominatie voor. Zijn eerste nominatie had hij gekregen voor Saturday Night Fever. It meant the world the first time because I didn't expect anything. Uh, any kind of credit on that film and then the idea that everyone approved of it was really exciting. Voordat hij genomineerd werd voor Pulp Fiction, had Vervolta al gezegd dat hij nu meer waarde zou hechten aan een nominatie. I would just be like a more mature guy who would know how to appreciate it better. You know than a kid who, who got one which is what I was. De Oscar stemmers hadden waardering voor Travolta, maar dat jaar verloor hij van Tom Hanks. Het jaar daarop kreeg hij wel enkele onderscheidingen voor Get Shorty. John Travolta gaf het volgende interview enkele uren voordat hij de Golden Globe als beste acteur kreeg voor zijn optreding Get Shorty. I got about three hours. I stayed. I promised myself I'd stay out all night, but the awards ended at 8 p.m. I, I feel good being back. I feel like I've been brought back into the party. I watched uh, Jamie Lee open it. I heard my name. I, at first glance, I no, I could have. Someone else, not me. And then it registered, took a second, registered. And then the good will from the group uh, just kind of swept me up. And uh, I felt um, really uh, honored by it. John Travolta is nu een van de populairste en meest invloedrijke acteurs in Hollywood. Hij is een fenomeen. Maar het is een invloed die hij wil gebruiken, niet misbruiken. I always like to look at power is not ever. Not, not the literal meaning of it, where you overwhelm people, but rather maybe you'd be so powerful that you'd not have to overwhelm anybody, in theory, you know. Um, so I like that, that idea. Um, but basically, just to get better quality of scripts, actors that, that you admire and respect around you, because it, it can't mean anything else. If you, if you, if you think it means the other stuff, like pushing people around, 
It doesn't. I gotta be honest with you. It did come easy to me, and I don't mean to say that there's evil lurking in me that, that that's, you know, uh, desperate to get out or something. What it is, is that I felt the, ca the character was really written so well that it gave me clues to how to play him. John Travolta praat hier over zijn rol van de bad guy in Broken Arrow. Hij had weinig ervaring met het spelen van een boef. Maar de persoon die hij speelt was een luchtmachtpiloot. En Travolta zelf had ruime ervaring achter de stuurknuppel. Hij zei nee tegen Top Gun en een officer en een gentleman. In dat laatste geval was de reden dat hij vlieglessen wilde nemen. Ja, yeah, ik ging naar American Airlines en ik werd een jetpilot daar. En dan... Uh, continued, you know. So, yeah, they, they were, were going to postpone the film, but I just said that I really wanted to play with this for a while. Uh, I chose life instead of film at that particular point. John Travolta werd daarbij niet bepaald als een ster behandeld. Oh, early on when you're a kid, you know, I think they get they get threatened that you're going to take their their spot in the airlines away from them. And I was always an actor who just wanted to fly, you know, and didn't, you know, wasn't threatening their job. But later, you know, people realize that you're not. Zijn loopbaan als acteur was op dat moment tot stilstand gekomen. Er gingen zelfs geruchten dat Travolta piloot zou worden bij een luchtvaartmaatschappij. Well, um, I entertain that uh, as a possibility in the in the realm of it's a feather in my cap, you know, to actually do it for a living. Actors tend to make better money, you know, if they get booked in a proper film. <laughs> so, you know, uh, sometimes not. If you do Pulp Fiction too many times, you know. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, uh, I like the idea. I love aviation. I love the airline industry. And uh, I kind of entertained it in a kind of mild-mannered way. What brings Travolta to the sterren to look at if he doesn't get surrounded by the stars? I think uh, flying is like an art of some sort. The design of aircraft certainly is, and the sport of it is. Uh, I think it probably gives me a little more objectivity. It's not as introspective. Mr. and Mrs. Travolta, how are you? Degene die Travolta aan de grond hield was Kelly Preston. Ze ontmoette elkaar op de set van The Experts, 1986. Ze was toen verloofd met Charlie Sheen. Toen aan die relatie een eind kwam, knoopte Preston een relatie aan met Travolta. Ze trouwden in 1991. Sindsdien gaat het gezin voor alles. Oh, I think separately. The families we grew up with were important to us, and then t collectively, our new family is important to us. I think you're a spot. And how did these drug busy actors find work and family life to combine? Well, lately, the last three last three years, it's been much like my dad did. You go to work, you come home, you have dinner, put the baby to bed, and on the weekend, you spend it as a family. You know, that's how most American families do it. And that's how we're doing it. So, you know, you just have to be clever with your time. Maar het doorsnee Amerikaanse gezin wordt niet op straat lastig gevallen. People are normally pretty terrific and they're they're just friendly and they normally won't uh, intrude on your privacy. And if it if it is it's very short and something very friendly. But we have had people who've come and sat down and joined us for dinner. And we're having an intimate discussion and hey, how you doing? And they come and they sit down at your table's like Hi, excuse us. Uh, you know that gets a little difficult. En is het moeilijk voor Kelly en John om elkaar aan het werk te zien en zorgen ze ervoor dat ze elkaars werk meteen te zien krijgen? Yes, we see them first, and we're we're definitely honest with each other. I think you don't want to be brutally honest with somebody, but fortunately, I think uh, we've both done films that the other has liked. De makkelijkste criticus in huis het Travolta is John's eerste zoon, Jet. He's seen two, Grease and Look Who's Talking. And uh, Greasy seems to really love the musical numbers. And, and uh, Look Who's Talking, uh, he loved, except when I kissed Kirstie Alley, then he, he, he didn't respond too well to that. And she's my favorite leading lady. Behalve aan zijn gezin, schrijft John Travolta zijn succes voor een groot deel toe aan zijn kerk, de Scientology Kerk. I think they're such great tools for people to to live by that uh, when you're in doubt of which way to live something you just you know go to 
go to some sort of recommendation there about how to play it. And it usually is 100% uh, correct. Miracles happen every day, you know, and uh, in various ways. And uh, who, who knows, you know, I think if, uh, if, if your intentions are in a decent way, you pull in miracles, you know, you kind of, things happen to you that should happen to you. John Travolta's loopbaan is een aaneenschakeling van wonderen geweest. Het lijkt wel alsof hij een soort beschermengel heeft. Hij geeft toe dat hij in films soms zichzelf heeft gespeeld. Maar zijn talent komt pas echt tot zijn recht als hij een ander speelt. Ik need een uh, character to play to feel comfortable. I, I, I don't mind playing myself like I did in Lucas Talking or Phenomenon. But I like it's a little more fun when I have some, some character attributes to play. Toen hij jong was, lagen de rollen niet voor het oprapen. Well, for 10 years, all they could do is to cast me as young men, because I was young then. Dat was John Travolta op zijn dertigste. It was fun for 10 years to play those other kinds of roles, but now it's a new generation, new era. And I'll play uh, maybe even some more interesting roles. En dit is John Travolta nu. There's more of them. And there is uh, the quality and depth of character that you usually get is, uh, is uh, distinctly different for the better and um and that's been evident in everything that's been offered to me um, recently john travolta is nu in de 40. hij lijkt niet ouder maar hij is wel beter geworden for an actor i think it's always been better even for women and uh, there'll be this argument that that's not true but i think you know when you get the chance to be meryl streep at her age and do madison county and then you get to uh, be John Travolta and do White Men's Burden. How could you argue that point? You know, and then you compare them to the roles that people get in their 20s or even early 30s, and and um, there might be more glitz to those roles or more high profile, but no one could question the depth that the characters have. And continue, look at Jessica Tandy in her 80s, and. Um, other stellar examples of people getting fabulous roles. Quillen Eastwood in at 60, whatever. You know, Paul Newman at 70, doing uh, the film he did last year. I mean, actors have the wonderful um, uh, opportunity to get better. John Travolta verdient maar liefst 50 miljoen gulden per film. Maar hij zegt dat het niet om het geld gaat. Well, it's, it's really always been about. Um, the, the, the better quality of work that I could have, more than the money. I think money is great, but it's a byproduct, and so is so are awards. They're what you do, what you get when you do a job well done. And so therefore, I don't put attention on money. I put attention on the quality of work, and then it might or might not beget money or award. Maar of het nu om het geld gaat of de prijzen. Dit is een periode waarin het John Travolta voor de wind gaat. It's always been good to be me. It's never been, uh, you know, I've always enjoyed my life. I'm playing it very cool. <laughs> I feel good being back. I feel like I've been brought back into the party. In de volgende aflevering van Hollywood Profiles, Sean Connery.